Hello, welcome to Volunteer Park here in Hoyk. We were supposed to be at Scremiston, of course, to uh, see Berwick take on Las Wade in National 3. That game is off, so we've come for a local derby. It's Hoyt Lindeen to take on Langham. Uh, both teams, of course, celebrating anniversaries. 100 years for Hoyt Lindeen, 150 for the oldest border club, Langham. But before we join Dale Clancy and Robin Purdy in the commentary box, let's have a word from the coaches. You won the reverse fixture 29-0 back in September, so do you expect the Lindeen to be on a bit of a revenge mission today? Aye, we've always found it tif uh, tough to come up to here and uh, get a win, so I'd imagine uh, Barry's got the boys fired up to see us up, uh, turn us over up at the rain patch up at your Volunteer Park. Yeah, well, it was going to be tough because Langham, uh, Langham dominated that game in territory and possession. Um, we were kind of a wee bit stronger today, we've got eight changes for the Penny Cook game. And we're kind of as strong as we were at the beginning of the season, hopefully. So um, those players coming back can hopefully reverse that. It seems a long time since we played Kistoffin away back in November. So fresh and ready to go. Uh, here's hoping we can get back on the pony right away. And you have a couple of strong additions today in Bailey Donaldson and Tom Hope, who've been turning out for Hoyk this season. What do you hope that they'll bring to the party? I have obviously been up at Hoyk for, uh, for some time uh, this season. Uh, it's good to have them back in the Crimson jersey. Uh, so hopefully Bailey gives a bit of direction and Tom will give a good fix on the scrum today. We've had a good week, plenty of numbers at training, which, is, which has been the case all season. Um, we've trained really well, so um, it was a tough selection. We had 25 or 26 available, so um, boys are looking forward to today. Well, for the second weekend in a row, we are following a Hoik team on a 3G pitch, but on this occasion, we are in East League 2, as Hoik and Lindeen are just uh, emerging from the tunnel here at Volunteer Park. They welcome Langham, and it's a game steeped in Borders rugby history, with a combined 250 years of existence between these two clubs. Langham, they'll be looking to turn around their recent fortunes after a promising start to the season, and they'll be looking to do the double over Lindeen, as Craig Hazlop mentioned before the game, and as many players know across Scotland, this is a very difficult place to come. When a game of rugby in Hoyke is a difficult task for any player, but Lindeen welcome a few faces back to try and turn around the, the result, which was 29-0 at Milne Town in September. They've got a couple of familiar faces in Morgan Tate and Logan Gordon Woolley. They start in the backs at 15 and on the wing. And also keep an eye out for Ryan Alley in the forwards. He's an open side flanker, uh, but he's already got five tries to his name this season. He'll be looking to try and exhibit his pace on proceedings. Now things get a little bit scrappy over on that far side but Hoyk managed to get their mitts onto the ball in the close contact areas and it is Ryan Alley the dogged work from the, the speedster he's a very abrasive back row player and he's got uh, rich history in sprinting in the family as well his brother Dylan was a, a New Year's sprint winner but the referee Matthew Wilkie noticing there's a, a penalty there not rolling away obviously Lindeen are going into their year and their 100th anniversary, Langham 150, so combined, these are these are two teams steeped in history, they know each other well, but they'll both be wanting to get the upper hand, so there's going to be a few niggles in here, isn't there? Oh, without a doubt, and players have played for, you know, each. there'll be players that played for each club, and players from Hoyt played, you know, down at Langham and vice versa, so yeah, it's going to be interesting from that point of view. Play now with uh, Ewan Wood on the halfway line. And he looks to try and find a runner there, and it is the, the hooker, Macaulay Parker. And he's got his first opportunity with the ball in hand to really try and stamp his authority on this game. But the Langham defence is holding strong, and it's uh, something that they've prided themselves on so far this season. They had a good result against North Berwick, where they conceded minimal points. Uh, but things have, have slipped away with injury and form, and perhaps a little bit of confidence with the young squad as well, as Langham conceded another penalty. There's a couple of penalties in the last few minutes here for Langham and it gives Hoyt Lundin a chance to kick in at the corners and try and put some pressure on this team. Yeah, and again, it's you know, dogged stuff from both teams. The front, Both sets of front rows have looked to introduce themselves into this game early in the piece and, yeah, I think we're in for a good one here today. It's certainly going to be an exciting game. They don't find touch there and they try and pass it about in the back. So there's Graham Anderson it just offers himself up for a cut to do the hard work and try and just tuck it under the arm and make some hard yards there as the ball goes through the hands of the ca captain Rowley to Ali and Ali again has broke the line and he's going to be a player to keep an eye out on but great work on the floor from Langham there but the referee Matthew Wilkie not seeing anything illegal but Ryan Ali is certainly a player to keep an eye out for but Matthew Mallon now is trying to find some space over on this touch side and try and dislodge this defence maybe try and find a weak arm 
And now the 10, Rory Graham. Trying to unlock the defence. And again, Ryan Alley just offering himself up. He's been wrapped up well there. A big tall prop. He's certainly uh, got a bit of height about him. But Morgan Tate now, who's been excelling in the Premiership for Hoyk. It's his first chance with the ball in hand to try and weave his way out of uh, danger. But that's a good break there. And it is uh, Jack Wilson. He's tried to get those big long legs going in this 3G rubber surface so it's certainly a it's certainly a paddock for throwing the ball about and playing some expansive rugby even though there's a little bit of a drizzle in there as Hoyt Lundin again playing concise and considered rugby over on that far side the referee is just judging that ball to drift off but Lundin they're patient and they've got good build up play and you can see they're using the whole squad they're doing a lot of runs from the back row the front row and also trying to get the outside backs into play Morgan Tate now just stepping back inside it was a, a high riding challenge there from Lewis Miller but uh, the referee and there's a, a bit of afters as well but Morgan Tate looking to go quick but I think the referee perhaps will uh, bring this back on you high tackle as we said a high challenge there it did look like it was riding high but again the penalties are mounting up for Langham here Yes, and they'll have to have a, a bit of a think about that. They don't want to get too far on the wrong side of Matthew Wilkie. He's been, you know, quick to penalise them, and they've all been, you know, obvious penalties thus far. That was high without any malicious intent, but yeah, it's something Langham will have to keep an eye on. Definitely, uh, it's, uh, these games, especially when they're so tight, you, you need to make sure that your discipline's bang on, and that's a good throw into the lineout from Macaulay Parker. He's found his target there as they look to try and play some expansive rugby and get it over into the wider channels as Matthew Mallon's just chopped at source and Morgan Tate playing uh, scrum half and finding the industrious Ryan Alley again and he's found a little bit of space over on that far side. I think that's Logan Gordon Woolley who's got his first real opportunity with his hands on the ball and again that's another penalty for Langham going off their feet on this occasion and this is just inviting pressure, something of which at the moment that Lindine haven't been able to take too much of an advantage of. Yeah, and you wonder just how much patience Mash Matthew Wilkie's going to have with these with the sort of totting up process. That's probably four or five quick succession penalties that Langham are giving away now, and you wonder when his patience is going to snap and he's going to flash a card. I think he was just having a conversation there with uh, James Rowley, the uh, Lundin captain, the big uh, towering number eight, just stamping out his uh, understanding of the way that Langham have been playing. Obviously, they've, they've conceded four going on five penalties in the opening exchanges in this game this game is 11 minutes gone so it's almost a, a penalty every other every other minute from Langham and this is the first time the Lindine have been into the 22 it's a scrappy line out but it does come back on a Lindine side and they get a little bit of go forward in them all and try and bring this forward and again another penalty let's see what pushing it down Time off, I'll speed the captain. Captain, captain. Matthew Walker just going to have a chat here and it's it's been coming. I'm not looking at any cards, but the penalty card, the count is coming up. Okay, go and have a word. I think yeah, he's perhaps made a rod for his own back there saying he's not thinking about any cards, but you're entering really dangerous territory here. Um, so close to the try line. If these uh, penalties continue, I don't think Matthew walkie has got any other option than to go to his pocket, but... We'll have to see if the, the captain does get his uh, point across, but this is a, a good platform for Lindine to try and strike from. Yeah, it's the first time anybody's really ventured into the opposition 22, and let's see what they can do. It's a clean line-out, and it's off, off the top, and it's a planned move. Jack Wilson was the man who's uh, leapt the highest there in the line-out, and they look to try and get a bit of go forward as he's worked his way back, the retriever of the ball, and I think that's Rowley at the back. It's not. It's uh, Lewis Stormont, actually, with the ball tucked under his arm as Ewan Woods just trying to direct traffic in there. And Langham are coming through. They're coming through the mall illegally there. And that was Eddie Turner who found himself in the wrong position. That's all right, they need it. Now, last warning. Right. Next one will be yellow card. Because yeah, yeah. the penalty count is beginning. To... That's a quick change of heart from Matthew Wilkie there. <laughs> it is need, but it's the right change of heart. He... You know he's, he's seen enough. Those last two penalties were the two most clear penalties you're going to see today, and I think he's been quite lenient, particularly on that most recent one. The a combination of the totting up and 
Macaulay Parker is tasked with throwing the ball into the line out and he's done well he's hit his man Wilson there and it's lacking the structure there and the cohesion to get that mall going forward but that has come back on the Lindine side it is the uh, hooker Parker who's just tucked up he's been swamped there by Turner and a, a few of his other muckers but Wood gets the ball away from the base and it's now starting to filter its way along the back line as it came to Malin in the centre and again he's been stopped dead but he's uh, offering himself up for a lot of hard work and carrying the ball in hand and Langham on this occasion Langham get the penalty good work on the floor there from Christopher Tate getting himself in a good position over the ball supporting his body weight and Wilkie only had one option there is to give the penalty he did indeed uh, consistency from Wilkie there and good defence from Langham and they'll, they'll take a great lift from that they've been under the cosh a wee bit in the opening exchanges of this or this half but they've, they've soaked it up and now they've got a chance to clear their lines that's Bailey Donaldson to clear his lines left footed kicker the Lindeen supporters over on that far side will be hoping that we don't see the best of Billy Donaldson this afternoon because he is a player who Hoyk Rugby Football Club have been nurturing and supporting in terms of playing him at fullback and aiding his development and this is uh, just another step on the wheel in terms of developing him as a rugby player and now Langham trying to play in the wider channels and just stretch this Lindine defence and slowing the pace down slightly but it's a little snipe at the base but good dogged work round the fringes from Lindine and there's going to be another penalty and it's to Lindine this time holding on in the deck you felt that the player got slightly isolated there the Langham player when he was taking the ball into contact and again Wilkie he's, uh, he's going to have a lot of these decisions to make in the game because He's not got any assistance on the touchline. He is the, the man who's dictating this ball. So it's going to be a, a, a very difficult afternoon for him to manage this game. Yeah, as we said before, it's a border, it's a border derby. You know, there's an element of desperation in the play. You know, particularly in the early exchanges, both teams want to stamp their authority. And I, th- I think he's made a great start to this game, Matthew Wilkie. He's been concise in his chat where, with both teams. And they know where they stand. And they know that too much more... In the, you know, indiscretions and the cards will be flashed a chance here for Stormont to open his account but also get the first score on the board here still 0-0 between Lindine and Langham the penalty's topping up for Langham and this is a chance for Lindine to punish them with the right footed kick from Stormont it looks like it's just drifted to the left hand side of the sticks but that's a warning a good kick there from a, a considerable distance and Langham lucky to get off the hook there and it remains scoreless yeah he certainly had he certainly had the distance and again Lang, Langham let off on that occasion and they need to kind of feel their way into this game now you feel yeah they've not really had much in the way of continuity of play and in and, and any sustained period with the ball in hand is that has found John Fruit John Fruit chucks it to his captain Rowley and Rowley's looking to just go direct again and takes play up to the halfway line as Lindine again enjoying sustained periods on the ball as Parker now comes round the corner he came from open to blind and it's a, a very tricky move and a tricky thing to defend but Langham doing well on that occasion to stop the, the hooker dead and they get a penalty on this occasion time off I, I think the referee again he's a little conversation with the, the Langham captain right. all game we've had this player moan yeah right. tell me quiet I will I'll he's do. just spending time okay okay just there good from the referee to lay his stall out as well and try and get the, the discipline in the, the, the players and make sure that they know that you know any of these uh, heated moments that happen during a game and you, you air your views he's, he's, he's telling them that Let's just continue playing rugby and, and make sure that nobody's going in the bin for, for any ill discipline of that nature. As the balls came down here from the line out and Ewan Wood now trying to find a player off the ruck and it's a it's a rush kick but it's went straight open field there. It's been well gathered by Lewis Miller who's looking to just go direct straight running from the inside centre. And it's going to be a penalty there to Langham and it's their chance now to perhaps decide whether they want the three points or if they're going to try and kick to the corner and I think that the captain who's also going to be the, kick, the kicker Nathan Smith he's opted to go for the points so Smith the captain and the right footed kicker from in front of the sticks strikes it well and it looks good the flags go up 3-0 Langham and it's the opening scores of this game and it is the, the Langham captain who gets the penalty 
Yeah, a confidence booster for Langham there. They've they've done well in defence so far. Their discipline's maybe been a wee bit suspect at times, but that seems to have eased up now as well. Eddie Turner, who's the man gathering the ball from the 22. And it's been swept up well there. I think that's Stephen Nicholl, who's uh, the experienced back row, as he called himself. He's uh, done well to sweep up the play. The loose ball is Donaldson now, left-footed kick. He, high, he hoists that high. Good connection with the ball and just ushering his orders as he gets in the defensive line. But it's uh, a chance here for Hoyland Dean. And he's been marshalled well in defence by Langham. Good kick chase there. And it is, oh, that's a huge collision. That is a massive hit on Macaulay Parker. It looked very legal from where I was standing as well. Joe Kirkup with a massive hit on the fringes. You could see that a mile off as well, but he's done well to bounce straight back up off of that. Evil. He most certainly has, Dale. You, you're absolutely correct. You could see that coming from here. All credit to the hooker. He took that at 100 miles an hour, and it was, you know, he only knew one way. He probably seen what was coming his way, and he rode it, and he's done well to get back up straight away. No malice intended. And, yeah, a good big hit, and you like to see it. That was a, a textbook tackle there. Really, really well executed. I have to say there as well, it was good to see, as you say, a great hit, a big hit, old school hit almost, without the rest of his teammates running in, slapping on the back, goading the player that's been hit. They just got, they just all got up and got on with it. It is going to be Ewan Wood to roll the ball back in. And it's a free kick. Pushing before the ball is uh, being rolled into the scrum. So again, a little bit of discipline, a little bit of... Um, Perhaps an experience from Langham coming there. Maybe a bit keenness as well as Rowley. He's certainly a player that looks keen for this game. He's uh, been offering himself up a lot so far in this fixture. As Fairbairn now gets round the corner. And Wood has uh, got Graham in the pocket. And Morgan Tate now working uh, hard from fullback to try and get himself in a position. But he's uh, knocked the ball on there. It's came back on Langham's side. And he's been shepherded well, the Langham player. And kicking the ball deep and this is where Morgan Tate likes to try and strike from he's already got seven tries in the Premiership he's, uh, I don't think he's probably got any in East League 2 so far this season but I'm sure he'll be looking to try and add some to his tally that's a good break there from Donaldson Donaldson back playing for his hometown club has made some good yards from the scrum and just going direct is now the number 8 Eddie Turner and a little snipe at the, the base as well. It just did open up there for uh, Jonathan Wilkes, but the door closed very, very quickly on him as he, as he went through his repertoire. But another break here, and it's uh, oh, into the 22 now. And Langer managing just to get in a dangerous area, but it has been turned over in the defence. And Lou Stormont is the man who got the ball in hand from that little scrappy phase of play. And it's a great clearance kick as well. However, the referee has noticed that they were outside the 22 when the ball was kicked, so it's going to go back. A throw into the line out for Langham, and that could be a mistake that comes back to haunt them. Now it's Donaldson out the back. They do have space over on that far side. Callum Helling. He's got a little bit of space over there, but Morgan Tate down trying to snaffle that ball on the ground. But Hoyt Lindin escape on this occasion. But Wilkes now going over the line, almost getting there as he's... Judo flipped towards the whitewash as came to Henderson. Now Donaldson, Donaldson looking to try and snipe for the line. But the door, the big blue door there, is firmly closed on this occasion. And now a big charge and run from Tommy Dixon. Just managing to ride the challenges there that were coming his way. Got himself wide enough from the set piece, from the ruck there. He got himself in a wide enough channel that he was able to pick a couple of holes in between the players ride the challenge, twist over and get the ball down and I think that is just what this game was craving and it's been coming we've mentioned it for the last few minutes and yeah after the reasonably slow start by Lang in the first few minutes of this encounter that try is no less than they've deserved the way they've defended their lines then fought their way back into the game and they've had, they've had all the territory in, you know, in the last 20-25 minutes Smith back with uh, kicking duties, the captain and he'll be looking to try and see if his radar's back on to make it 10-0 to Langham. 8-0 it currently sits here at Volunteer Park in East League 2. Slowly but steadily getting there. It looks good. And it is successful. 
and it came at a precious time there for Langham right on the stroke of half time and it was a relatively slow start to this game it took a while for both teams to, to get any sort of control or tempo in the game it's been scrappy at times but probably a fair reflection of the opening 40 minutes and it's currently Hoytland D nil, Langham 10 Play back underway here at Volunteer Park. Lundin kicking off. Ten points to nil down against the visitors, Langham. Stormont with a, a good kick deep into the 22. And Lundin coming out with a lot of intent. Looking to try and compete on the floor there, but Langham doing well to get the ball away. And Donaldson has just spotted that there's a gap right in front of us here on the stand side. And he's tried to turn Logan Gordon Woolley. He's got his uh, Hoyt teammate. Morgan Tate for support. He wants to go it alone and he's been snaffled up in defence there but the balls came back on a Lindine side and the big towering second row Jack Wilson has been good in the line out this afternoon and perhaps just running into a little bit of traffic there Tate to throw in to the line out just right in front of our camera position here at Volunteer Park and he tried to find Nickel Nickel think he was impeded in the air and the referee has got an arm out for advantage but Henderson doing well to find Wilkes Wilkes got Donaldson who's got some support out the back door where it's going over to that far side and it is a great passage of play there from Langham just stretching the field accuracy there was top notch in terms of getting the ball through the hands and it's uh, got into the, wide, uh, the tighter channels there as the captain Smith just holds the ball up now Henderson and taking the ball forward just trying to eat away at these tighter harder yards now very very keen to attack there the try scorer in the first half has just thrown the ball back to the Lindine. And Wood, with the box kick, puts the fullback Lewis Martin, um, Lewis Miller, sorry, under a bit of pressure. Knock on. And Lindine managed to steal a few yards there with an unforced error. As both teams set. And it's uh, the most scrums have been, have been pretty crisp so far in this game. This is another one. And it's uh, coming back and they try and get the ball out quickly. Woody doing some good work behind the scrum to dig that ball out. And now it's Anderson, who's uh, maybe not too confident with his kicking, but he's very confident with the ball in hand as he brushes off a few Langham challenges to take play just shy of the 10-metre line. And now Ryan Alley, who had a very explosive opening 10 minutes, he perhaps faded as Lindine was starved of ball in the last half hour but Ewan Wood just noticing there was no not many options on and it has came to on back on a Lindine side it was girdled at the back by, uh, by Langham and it's came back on a Lindine side good heads up rugby from the scrum half not being too predictable you've got to do this sort of thing when you're a scrum half you need to vary your play to keep the defence guessing because otherwise you're very scripted and that's good from uh, Ewan Wood there just to put the boot to ball and, and try and stab it in behind for give the wingers something to chase okay, they take the quick tap and try and get the ball to Ali. Ali has now got the ball through the hands as Tate has got some space here and so has Logan Gordon Woolley he tries to kick the ball but it has almost worked out perfectly for the two flyers on this side Tate and Logan Gordon Woolley almost I think the referee's going to have a word with Joe Kirkup and certainly a card coming you're done in the first half half ten so that's a, a yellow card and an apology there they've certainly been able to maintain possession for a sustained period but not been able to really encroach too much on this Langham defensive line and again it is the replacement street he's managing to get around the park now and trying to influence the game and there's almost an interception there and it was almost Lewis Miller who got his mitts on the ball he just couldn't get two hands onto the ball and the referee I think he was and that's my interpretation I think he was he was straining every sinew to try and grab that ball and try and get it into his clutches because he had open field after that so I think the, the London players were, were maybe hoping for another yellow card I think Matthew Wilkie's got that absolutely spot on and I agree with you Dale I, th I think if you're a you know it depends on what side of the fence you're on we're obviously neutral if you're a Lindine fan a Lindine player you're maybe hoping for a yellow there but the game's a bogey if that's a yellow card um, he was as you say straining every sinew and yeah he's made the correct decision there Wilkie as he, as he has on many occasions yeah he's had a good it's, afternoon I think in terms of it's, it's a difficult game to officiate because of 
the because of the nature of this game, you know, Lundin looking for a lot of revenge from a, a heavy defeat in September, you know, trying to get some momentum into their league campaign, Langham, who are frustrated with their re- recent results, you know, these things can boil over, but Wilkie's done a good job in the middle to, to make sure that we we're still getting a game of rugby. Graham has moved into scrum half, as uh, Chris Shand has uh, came into the phase of play, he gets the first chance with the ball in hand, it's spilled over there to Morgan Tate, who's footing his evaded him in this little phase of play but Ryan Alley now he's sweeping up the ball and looking to try and stretch his legs and that looked relatively high there but he's still going again the the workman like charging of Ryan Alley there on that occasion just paid dividends for the youngster and the Langham players swarming round that ball trying to win the, the turnover and now the replacement Liam Sharkey He's got one try so far this afternoon, uh, so far this season. He's entered the field of play, but it has been coughed up to a Langham side, and it's went straight down the, the throat of Stormont. And he just manages to evade the first challenge. He's almost got the second one out the road. Now the, the third one comes in, and they manage to bite him and get him down to ground. And they win the penalty. Great defence there from Langham. They were going very, very lateral, Lindine, but the defensive effort there. Opportunity to nudge it over the, the post here for Bailey Donaldson, who will looking to try and get the first points of the second half and add to Langham's tally of 10 so far in this fixture. A good left footed kick, it certainly looks like it's got the distance again. It's successful on this occasion for Bailey Donaldson. He gets the penalty and he stretched Langham's lead. It's uh, Hoytland Dean nil, Langham 13. Stormont. He's back at his own five metre line and he's going to have to try and kick and he trundles it now, he kicks it forward. It looks like they're... Oh, it's, it's, if this goes in, then I'd like to see this one back, but it's a great attack and run there from Langham. They try and kick, throw the ball back in, but it's been bundled into touch. The option was there for Stephen Nicholl. He was there in support. He could have got the try, but pull that back a little bit more. He looked a mile offside. I think if he was any further forward, he would have been in Borders College across the road. He came from an offside position. It looked like he, he got that. I'd like to see that back. I might be completely wrong. But Langham do get an attacking platform. And it is Nickel off the line out again. Donaldson's got the sh- short runner. It looks like it is the, the captain, Smith, who's just close to the line. But he's been defended well. Penalty to Lindine. And from a great attacking platform there for the captain, Smith. He almost looked like he was charging over that line. Great defensive effort from Lindine, who maybe just rewards in terms of the, the decision that went against him. That was a great defensive effort, and it keeps the score 13-0 to Langham. Yes, they would, I think they would have felt mightily aggrieved uh, if they would have, if they'd have conceded a score there. It was great defence on the line, really dogged stuff, and it might just throw them the lifeline that they need to get back into this game. Parker with the line out. He does find Graham, and now Shand who floats that ball out, it did go behind Anderson and he looks to try and find Ali back inside but the defence from Langham are just dancing over the, the field there and getting into position as it comes back to Shan Donaldson manages to charge down, Graham is the player and it's guddling about and bouncing about in the, the goal area there just shy of the Lindine line five metres out from their own line and they're going to have to batten down the hatches and try and protect this ball, they've got the advantage, they've got the penalty but it's getting very loose now and this is when the game starts opening up a little bit for both teams not just the the team who's losing or the team that's winning both teams will try and take advantage of this loose play and it's a dummy throw there as he he perhaps keeps the defence a little bit tighter Donaldson now finding Miller and the ball just evading his grasp there but it has went back and it's now in the hands of Adam Hall and Adam Hall who's just dancing his way back in field he's evaded a few challenges he's just returning from injury so it's certainly an early tester for the the youngster but a great pass there there's a huge gap it looked like it was uh, open prairie there for Christopher Tate but has been defended well there by Lindine the ball's getting through the hands now Donaldson's got some options outside him it goes there to the far side and it bundles over and it looks like the 10 minutes in the sin bin has worked well because he is the player who reaped the rewards of that great break from Christopher Tate managed to just get in behind the defensive line something something we've not seen a lot of in this fixture you know getting in behind that defensive line breaking the first defence and then when they spun it wide Lundin were having to work very hard to cover the space over on that far side but from close range good try there from uh, Langham Lundin getting another chance from the scrum here the referee just resetting this 
and they roll the ball into the scrum last roll of the dice here from Lindian Rowley just passing off the base they've hit an acute angle with Anderson the ball has been spilled in contact it's came back on a Langham side and he's been scragged and ragdolled to the ground and the referee brings proceedings to a close it is another game against Langham for Hoyt Glendine where they fail to register a single point and Langham win this game 18 points to nil away from home to add on to their 29 nil win at home earlier in the campaign and it probably is a fair reflection of the way that the game went we're going to speak to the uh, respective camps shortly and get their take on the fixture but it is Langham who win in East League 2 18 points to nil away from home at Volunteer Park to come up here and get the result again and to nil them again is uh, it's what we were looking to do yeah. it's something we pride ourselves on is working for each other and, and like you say getting off the line and just helping each other out, helping each other out tracking the inside and uh, that's, that's what it takes to nil teams you'd have to do it for the 80 minutes as well which we managed to do today we just kept working and ground out the win didn't get the result today but I'm no like disheartened about the effort and all that for the boys we look at the start of the season you know we took 11 boys injured in the first game most of them key players as well so we more or less had to rebuild from the start of the season and it's been difficult you know we went in in the build up 100th year thinking ah you know we've, we might actually be able to achieve something this season and then first game just completely wiped that out we've had to rebuild and we're now starting to see that it's all come together I mean again we cost off and we didn't get the result but you know the effort for the boys the the gelling, the team, you know, we feel like a team again. And away next week to high flying North Berwick. What will be the work ons and training this week for that one? Obviously, with the break that we've had, uh, sloppiness, just handling and stuff like that. Our defence is pretty set. We can, we can hit and we're getting up off the line fine. It's just just being more accurate in attack, finishing off the moves and uh, just sorting the hands out because it was a bit sloppy to begin with today. But that's expected after being off for so long. I think we just need to practice on. On breaking, when we were making our line breaks, I think we weren't supporting each other as well, getting singled out, and that's when they were turning us over. So that's definitely something we need to work on. And also what we're doing in the final third as well. Um, we're no, we don't want to play a kicking game or anything like that. We want to, at the end of the day, we're an amateur team. We want to play enjoyable rugby. Um, and if we're not getting the results, as long as we're enjoying it, that's all that matters.